A new device may soon be able to heal wounds in less than a second by reprogramming cells in the body. Researchers say their tissue nanotransfection technology can heal with a single touch and doesn't require a hospital or a lab. Dr. Chandan Sen is director of the Center for Regenerative Medicine and Cell-Based Therapies at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. He joins me now from Stanford, California. Dr. Sen, this sounds incredible. First, explain to our viewers what exactly this technology is and what you hope it will do. This technology comprises of two parts. It has a hardware and then it has a genetic code that the, is passed into the body using the hardware. The hardware may be viewed as a series of nano needles. And these needles essentially transfer the genetic code into the tissue of interest. And the genetic code is decided by the fate you want. So if you want to switch a skin, for example, to a nerve cell, or a, a skin to, for example, blood vessels, the genetic code would be different. I th I'm just getting my head around this. So nanotransfection can turn skin cells into nearly any type of cell that a patient might need. Explain the science behind that and the possibilities it presents for treating patients with different medical needs. So I think a, a more common notion is the uh, science of stem cells. And now we live at a very exciting time when we know that adult cells not embryonic cells, but adult cells can be switched for their function outside the body in the laboratory. That's already known. Now, the commonly used practice today is to switch the function of the cell, depending on the therapeutic need, outside the body, and then introduce that cell into the body. When you do that, we think what happens is the cell that just got switched or converted faces a very hostile environment with numerous cell types and does not do well as it relates to what they were supposed to do. So we came up with the approach of not just introducing a cell anyway, very few cells can function on their own. So we actually switch the entire tissue that is currently in your body and that switch of function is intended at a particular specific therapeutic need. The applications for this could be really broad based. Well, some of the testing you and your colleagues have done involved a mouse with an injured leg. What were you able to conclude from that test? So what we did was we transected the major blood supply called the femoral artery to the leg, and we were trying to see whether after we have uh, cut that off, can we still rescue the leg. In this case, in about a week or 10 days, the leg necrotizes or gets damaged. Uh, so what we then did after we transected, we went ahead and used our chip to introduce a genetic code, which we discovered essentially inspired by the formation of blood vessels that we have during fetal development. So from that science, we extracted a genetic code, which we then injected into the skin and asked the skin essentially to become blood vessels. In seven days, we started seeing new blood flow. In 14 days, significant perfusion and rescue of leg was achieved. Wow. Well, this technology has not yet been tested on humans. What can you tell us about the timetable for starting human trials? So first of all, the technology was developed with imminent impact in mind. So we have been studying quite a bit of regenerative medicine on the cell biology side, and fascinating breakthroughs have come through. Uh, you know, uh, not as much impact yet. So we were now taking the reverse direction where we try to have a device that would be in a, in a minimally invasive manner, switch tissue function within the live body. When you do that, you are actually doing that in the presence of immune surveillance, because when you do switching of cells outside the body, the immune system is not there. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, the immune system uh, in objects to introduction of mm -hmm. cell types or other types of biological material uh, into the body. So ours do not have that problem. So the sum total of this is that the barrier to go to human is pretty low in our case. And we are hopeful that within a year or so that we would have permission, appropriate approvals to do human testing. Well, it was really remarkable developments. Dr. Chandan Sen, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.